Hey, hey everyone. Today I'm gonna to be introducing you to a new complex rocket that I built here at home. And I'll be introducing it to you here in a second. But first I thought I'd give you some background of the rocket. Now for this rocket, I kind of wanted to model it after a missile, give it a nice sleek look, but still of course be able to carry a passenger. This is Neil Armstrong. He's gonna be the pilot of this missile. I'm sorry, rocket. The rocket is two stage, but it has five engines. He's not gonna sit, so you can just lay down. Okay, its first stage has four F engines, and the second stage has one E engine, but I'll get back to that later. Initially, I drew up a design, which every good rocket builder should do. First, you wanna lay out your specs on paper and start out with just a kind of a basic design, and you can get more complex later as you start building it. This is my more complex uh, blueprint layout. This rocket also has an onboard computer to ignite the second stage engine. It took me a few months to build this rocket and it wasn't easy. When you get into a project like this, you gotta be prepared to spend a lot of your free time working on it. For example, as you can see on your screen, there were 30 different steps I had to design and take just to build this rocket. You can never go wrong with checklists. And speaking of checklists, the pre-launch checklist for this rocket, when you're getting ready to launch it, is actually 19 steps. You have to do 19 things just to get this rocket prepared for launch. But without any further ado, let me introduce my rocket to you, the Sidewinder. Okay, so here she is. I think some of you can see why I called it the Sidewinder. Kind of reminds you of a Sidewinder missile. At least that's what it reminded me of after I was finished building it. Like I said, it's two stages, and I'm going to demonstrate it here in a second. It stands just a couple inches shorter than my previous rocket, the Ephemera Evan Nest, which itself was about four feet. So this one's just shy of four feet tall. Neil Armstrong is gonna ride right up here in the command module. And actually it will be about right here is where his head's gonna be. But I'll explain that to you when we break the rocket down. But right now I'm gonna demonstrate to you how the rocket's gonna launch. Okay, three, two, one ignition. The four F engines in the first stage down here ignite and lift the rocket off the launch pad. And it burns and it burns and it burns for over, th for over three seconds. After that three seconds is done, these F engines are F15-4, so they have a four second delay. So two seconds after that four second delay, halfway through that four second delay, after this is coasting up and still coasting up, the uh, computer in the second stage right here is going to ignite the E engine that rests about right here. Okay? So it fires, pulling itself away from the first stage. That gives us about a, another second when it starts to reach its apogee and this is uh, firing off into space. Not really. But uh, about a second later, let me put this down, the F engines will ignite their discharge, pushing out the piston inside, which deploys its parachutes. Pretty sweet, huh? And I'll get back into this stage later. Meanwhile, this E engine is continuing to burn, burn, burn. And once it's out, it has an eight second delay, which means it's gonna coast up for a couple seconds, and then it's gonna reach its apogee and start coming down, nose first, okay? So it's coming down, it's coming down. It, it ignites the charge. Now there's a piston that rests right here. And, it's and that piston is divided into two different sections. A section for the second stage and a section for the uh, what I call the service module, which is this part right here between the two blue parts. Now the piston rests right here, okay? So it's about it goes from about right here to about right here. So it's about that long. And there are stopping pins right here. But the command module comes down to about right here, okay? So the E engines ignite, the gas comes up, pushing this piston up, and it bumps this command module. But actually, there's a stick running through it that actually pops off the nose cone first. So the piston comes up, pops off the nose cone, and then pushes the command module out. And also, at the set, right after this happens, let me put this down here, the piston, after hitting these stopping pins, actually pushes the uh, 
service mo what I call the service module away from the second stage. Okay, like this. So the um, command module comes out and the pilot chute pulls out the actual main chute for the command module where Neil Armstrong is gonna be in, mini Neil Armstrong. And then the, the service module also comes out deploying its chute out of the piston. And this also comes out deploying the chute for the second stage. And everything comes back to the earth. Nice, safe, and sound. Anyway, that's the demonstration. Now I'm going to go over each piece. There are four pieces. I'll go over each piece and explain to you how I made them. Okay, so this is the first stage. This is what's going to deadlift the Sidewinder rocket off the launch pad. Now the entire rocket weighs about two and a half pounds fully loaded rocket engines, Neil Armstrong and everything. Which is why I'm gonna need four F engines to lift this sucker off the launch pad. With the power of these four rocket engines, they can uh, deadlift a rocket that weighs about three and a half pounds max. So we got some wiggle room there. And as you can see, I'll be showing you some pictures up here in the corner as I talk about this. Now, it has four fins and two launch lugs, longer launch lugs at the sides. It also has four vent holes right here, okay? Now these vent holes are not for these F engines. The vent holes are actually for the second stage E engine. When it ignites, it's actually gonna be still inside the rocket when it ignites. So this allows some of that gas to escape because right below these uh, four vent holes is the piston that's gonna deploy the chute for the first stage. But not to wor worry, it actually has uh, a layer of foiling on the top cover of the piston. So it will be uh, protected at least for a, a moment or two. Okay, and that's all it needs. Now, the piston in here actually rests on some stopping pins that I put in here right above the four F engines. So the piston goes about right here to about right here. And like I said, once the four F engines uh, are depleted and they ignite their ejection charge, it pushes, this will be free, free and clear probably on its way back down to earth, it ejects the piston like this and once it gets so far out, it just automatically pulls the parachute out. Okay, and like I said, the part, both parts actually, this part, the top part is protected with foil from the E engine, and the bottom part is protected with foil from the discharge of the uh, four F engines. Parachute's the biggest parachute of the entire rocket, and there are, including the drogue chute for the command module, there are one, two, three, four, five parachutes total. Like I said, this one's the largest one. It's about two feet in diameter. Since the piston is actually, the opening's upside down, gravity wants to open the, the uh, piston hatch, but the stopping pins are right here keeping it shut. And then once the ejection uh, exhaust gas pushes it out, it's actually gonna be pushing this shut, which isn't is until it is actually completely released from the first stage, and then it's gonna have the room to open up, which it will. Okay, so that's the uh, first stage. We'll move on to the second stage. Okay, I'm actually gonna be doing the second stage and the service module together because their recovery system is actually combined. But let me start with the uh, second stage down here. Okay, it also has four fins, just like the first stage. Like I said earlier, it uses an E engine to uh, continue its um, ascent. And the computer, same computer I uh, use for, well it's actually, it's a second computer, but it's, it's identical um, as the one I use for ephemera of a nest. And what you do is you just unhook the um, little hatch here and you feed this in just like so. The uh, igniter comes out the bottom and you hook it up to the engine itself, put this back on. And like I said, the uh, igniter works on a timer. So after, um, after launch and it feels the G-force of launch, it starts a timer of about um, three and a half seconds until it ignites the E engine. Now, anyway, the, uh, the nose cone is actually connected to the service module um, because it needs to pop off the command module, but I don't want it just floating away and losing it. 
and I didn't connect it to the command module just because there wasn't a really good place to connect it and my original design wouldn't allow for that. Um, but I redesigned it and, and so it's fine where it's at. So upon ejection, this actually pushes the piston up to the stopping pins which pushes out the command module which I'll get to next. And then this also pushes the service module free of the second stage and then the um, elastic shock cord brings it back out like so. I didn't pack it very well just because I was in a hurry, um, but it'll come out nice and neatly as it did before. And this comes back down to the planet, the planet, nice and easy. It actually hooks in there just like I did for Ephemera and S. There's a cap in here I, I carved slots out of and a hole for the E engine to be fed through. As you can see for the, the piston slash parachute bays, I have a bulkhead right here, a divider that separates the two parachute bays inside the single piston. I, I, I'm probably proud of this system the most because I've never seen anything like this before and I invented it just for my needs. So uh, I actually had to make a few of these because I tested my rocket out as you'll see. And uh, after, after a while, um, if a test didn't go very well, these would melt and I have to remake them, but I, I got it down to perfection now where I can reuse them. Okay, this is the command module connected to the service module. Um, the only thing it really serves is the parachutes for the second stage and the service module. But I guess it does kind of like uh, hold in the command module and allow for its chutes to deploy, I guess. So, hey, it's a service module. All right, so this is like the golden ticket right here of my engineering capabilities with this rocket. I, I designed a system for this rocket that basically allows four pieces the second stage is the service module and the command module as well as the nose cone to all disconnect with the firing of uh, the exhaust of one uh, rocket engine. And so the way that works, second stage is down here, actually comes up to about right here. And the piston is resting on that, goes up to about right here. The stopping pins are right here, but the, um, the command module actually comes down just below the stopping pins about uh, three quarters of an inch. But even below the bottom of the command module is a stick, as you can see in the corner, that runs about an additional half inch to three quarter inches below that. And that stick runs all the way through the command module and rests and stops about right here. So when that piston is pushed by the hot gases, it comes up and first it hits that stick, which pushes up and pops off the um, nose cone of the command module pushing it aside and then right after that happens the piston keeps rising pushing the command module out of the service module allowing it to fly off but then it hits the pins and there's still enough um, kinetic energy to actually detach the service module from the second stage and this comes out and deploys its chute as well as the second stage uh, chute as I showed you previously but uh, focusing on the command module you can see right here is the stick, okay? This is what is pushed by the piston. It's the first thing that's pushed by the piston when it rises. And you can see it pop out of the top right here, and that's what uh, disconnects the nose cone. Okay, and I'll give you a little demonstration right now. Put it in there, and here comes the piston, and it pops right off, okay? I think that's so cool. And I'll show you the inner workings of it here in a second. And um, once the command modules popped off of the service module, gravity and just uh, friction and wind bring the um, drogue chute out, which brings out the main chute, allowing the command module to fly down or coast down nice and easy. And don't forget, inside of the command module, of course, you need an astronaut. And this was a tricky system to, uh, to develop. And you can see the, how I did it in the corner here. And there's good old Neil. He's a magician. How to get in there, I don't know. All right, here's the stick. It's just uh, like three popsicle sticks, three or four popsicle sticks just kind of glued together. But the tricky thing of it is, is that you need to separate the command module 
where the astronaut is down here from the top where the parachute bay is. And I did that with a rotating bulkhead. It's actually a pretty thick piece of cardboard in here that is not actually glued down or anything, but it rests um, on top of some popsicle sticks, okay? And then there is a tube running down through here that stops at the little bulkhead and it's not connected to it either. But that keeps the bulkhead from being pushed up is that tube and from being pushed down is the popsicle sticks that I glued, cut and put in there. But it still allows it to rotate as you can, uh, as you can see here in, in the corner up here. Okay, it's really, it's, I'm really proud of that one. That allows us to actually get the astronaut in here, close it up and then twist it back on and it allows it to rotate. Now I actually tested just this part, the ignition of the second stage, uh, three times out uh, in the park. So take a look. As you can see the first time, while the service module did disconnect from the second stage, the command module and the nose cone failed to deploy off the service module. So I had to make some adjustments, uh, sparing you the, the full details and, and the complications. I basically did some fixing to the uh, second stage and service module piston um, because a little part of that melted and that allowed some hot gas to escape around um, and that didn't allow the piston to fire at the uh, higher velocity that it need to to fully deploy the command uh, module. Also, my chutes at the top of the command module were packed too tight up against the stick, not allowing it to rise completely to the top, ejecting the nose cone. So I, I made some fixes and I gave it a second test. Take a look. So you can see this time it worked. The nose cone uh, popped off the command module, followed by the command module pop popping off the service module. But the service module, however, did not di did not disconnect from the uh, second stage as it was supposed to, which is odd because the piston had enough kinetic energy to uh, detach the service module the first time. So um, I made a few more adjustments uh, to the where the service module and the second stage connect. I, I made it a little bit more loose, and then I gave it a third test. But uh, while again, while the nose cone and the command module did detach from the service uh, sec service module, the service module did not, again did not disconnect from the second stage. And uh, after I reviewed video for a couple hours and um, really gave it some thought for over the course of a few days, I came to the realization that its gravity is my is my main um, concern of the test. Um, it's it's the reason why I believe. Uh, I haven't had all three, the nose cone, the, ser the command module, and the service module all detached together at the same time. It's just because gravity is pushing them down. And while, uh, while it launches, um, that's going to be the exact opposite. Gravity is going to be um, pushing, them, um, pushing them apart, basically, because the entire rocket will be upside down. So I came to the conclusion since the service module did detach the first time, and then the second and third time the command module and nose cone detached as well, that I just came to the conclusion that, that all three of them will end up decoupling themselves upon uh, a nose dive during a real launch. Okay, that concludes this uh, how it was made video of the Sidewinder rocket. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting. I hope it, it inspired you to go out there and uh, learn your own um, ways of making your own rockets. Now again, this rocket's launch date is not until the end of summer 2018, so about a year from now. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Until the next video, God bless.